Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. The series you're about to see is called Grow As We Grow. It's part of my Perk membership series, and it's really about people showing off their gardens. I think it's a great way to integrate what I'm doing in the garden with people that follow the Rusted Garden, what they're doing in the garden. And members, you know, get to submit the videos, but after we set this all up, we do a little uh, viewing party, show off our gardens, these are gonna become public, and I'm allowing people to kind of shout out their social media, but I think it's just a fun way for everybody to share their gardens on a little series called Grow As We Grow. I thought I would make Grow As We Grow really informal. Use your iPhone or video camera, let people know where you're from, show off your garden. I wanna keep it that simple. The whole point to this is for everybody to share their gardens. I wanna thank Angela, Rebecca, and Stacy for sending in videos. I'll integrate those into here. And Grow As We Grow is really gonna be just showing off what you're doing in your garden now. And let's just start with what I'm doing. Right down here, I am collecting seeds for next year. I'll be selling these at my seed shop. These are jalapenos, mixed jalapenos, poblanos. I'm gonna be doing some other things, but I've just actually processed all these last night and I'm letting the seeds dry. I'm gonna sort these out in a little bit. But when your seeds are nice and kind of creamy looking like that, they're good. If they're starting to turn brown like these, they're bad. So it's really easy to tell after a couple of days, your pepper seeds at least will stay this color and they're gonna just dry and you'll be able to store them. But if they start turning that kind of dark brown color like these right in here, if I can grab them, like the ones right up in there, you're gonna to wanna to get rid of those. All right, let's go out to the garden. It really is an amazing 75 degree day here today. I'm putting in the last of my apple trees, some other plants, but I wanted to show you something I'm doing in here. This has all been redesigned. I think I have a video on it, but scattered down in the wood mulch, I just threw down radish seeds a while back and I can come over here now, look in here and I have radishes growing. I'll be doing a video on this. Let's see if there's any more. Here's, those are smaller. No, there's some larger ones. Let's come over here. I'll be doing a video on this soon, but you can just toss radish seeds down. I put in some kale. Oh, look at the rabbit. That rabbit's getting friendlier and friendlier that it just doesn't run away. You can just scatter down in your landscape beds, radish seeds, lettuce. I've got some peppers growing. I'll be talking more about that. But today I'm going to be harvesting radishes. Let's go out to the main garden. You guys did a great job on your videos. Thanks for being the first three people. Let's check out Stacy's garden. It's called the Rooted Heart Garden and you're going to see where she gets her screen name from. Hi, I'm Stacy, your urban chicken mama. Today I'd like to give you a little mini tour of a section of my garden. I live about 30 minutes south of Seattle and I call my garden the Rooted Heart Garden. Let me show you around. So this section of my garden is the first raised beds I ever built. And right here I have a whole ton of lettuce going on. Down here we've got a pumpkin. I'm hoping I can harvest before Halloween gets here. It's not looking too promising. Over here, oh, this guy I love. This is one of my uh, towers. It's called the Garden Tower 2 Project. I love it because it spins. You put compost in the top and I added some worms. And then down below, you harvest the worm tea and the compost. It's amazing. Over here, I just pulled out most of the uh, zucchinis and squashes. We got one left right there and I planted some onions. Here is my very first asparagus and got some Swiss chard and some kale. There's some chickens. <laughs> and here is a corn little test I did. I didn't have long enough in the season, so I don't think they're going to make it because now we've turned cold. This is my adorable new trellis and I've been growing beans on it and what's left of those tomatoes. And over here we have some celery. This was a bird cage I cut up and made into a little mini trellis for the last of the squash there that's still growing. And we've got some Brussels sprouts that I hope we're gonna get big pretty soon. I love it. Yeah, just one section of my garden. Oh, and let me show you one more thing before I let you go. This is my brand new wine cap mushroom patch. I've harvested three times out of it so far, and I just am over the moon that I have it now. You can't see any growing right now. There's some 
left from where I cut the other ones off. So yeah, thanks for watching a little mini tour of my garden. Make it a great day. I'm going to be cleaning up all of these beds. The leeks are going to get processed and used. I'm putting in my garlic. You can see some of the garlic is starting to sprout up in there. That's nothing to worry about. That just happens. So I'm actually looking for stuff to do on this beautiful day. The poblanas you just saw came off of these plants. This is all going to get weeded out, cleaned up a little bit for the fall. Um, let's go in here, pull out some sweet potatoes. These have been in here since May. It's the first week of November. And soon as the frost comes, that's when I want to get in there and start looking for the sweet potatoes. This frost comes, the vines die off, and here's just a couple of them. Those are not particularly huge. Here's some larger ones. Not to the size that I want. Let's see if I can find any more reaching in there. So this could be, I'm not going to say a failure. There's a couple different varieties in here. I'm looking for sweet potatoes that are going to be twice the size of this one. But I'm going to get plenty out of here. Again, you know, everything's not going to be perfect, but there's going to be a ton of sweet potatoes in here. I also have a lot of potatoes going. Those are probably third or fourth wave. Manage the little bits of frost that we had here. So I'm going to let these keep growing, see what I get out of here. If I spin over here, I got a whole area of potatoes I need to dig up. Some of them I'm going to be keeping for next March as my seed potatoes, other ones I'll be eating. You can see some of the potatoes that stayed in there have sprouted up and they're growing. Let's see what's in there. So digging up this area, it's probably going to be a mixed bag of things. Lots of nature. Well, we found a rabbit. There's a frog. Let's move that out of the way. I might have harvested a lot of these. There's a nice large potato in there. Some smaller ones. And if I start digging around, I can find more. But these were started back in probably March or April. I usually come out just like this, pull out some potatoes. There's always more in there. Here's a couple purple ones. And I don't really harvest these, let them dry and store them. I just eat them out of the ground. But I want to get out enough that I have my seed potatoes next year. I'll let those grow. And I'm sure I probably have 20, 30 more pounds of potatoes sitting right in here. Thanks, Rebecca. She's going to show off her no-dig garden, and she's going to talk about the Trombensino squash. She has a squash tunnel, and I'm a, I am actually sold on that. I'm going to grow that next year. Greetings from Central Virginia, Amherst County. Um, I am Rebecca, and this is my third year in gardening. And this year was my year where I really expanded things and took it on a much larger scale. We've been eating out of the, our gardens now all since April and are still getting summer crops coming in. It's amazing. So I am a strictly no-dig gardener. Um, this year I double the size of my garden to what you see now. Plus there are beds that are all on the perimeter. It was built on this field right here, which was just an ordinary field. Um, you know, it gets hayed a couple times a year. It's never been sprayed. And the entire garden, as I said, is no dig. Uh, everything underneath the entire garden is uh, cardboard, every inch, every surface. The pathways are wood chips and the uh, beds were made by layering com uh, compost, about four inches of compost on top of the, on top of the cardboard. I used uh, organic hay as a mulch this year and that seemed to work really, really well. And I will probably be using some of that next summer as well. I get it and then I let it sit and, and begin to compost down. Um, the garden is still producing. It's sort of amazing that it's still producing. Um, I'm, I still have, in spite of the fact that we've had wasp uh, frost, I still have lots of bees, pollinators, and flowers. I'll just show you one of my favorite things from this year, which is was my squash tunnel and melon tunnel, which is made of cattle panels. Uh, which are easy to get around these parts. Even though it's all died off now, this is a Trombocino squash, and this was definitely the prize of the garden this year. I planted two Trombocino squash, and it completely grew up over this tunnel. Really prolific and disease resistant. Uh, I mean, I had some squash bugs, and uh, but it was much more resistant than the other forms of squash. This thing can put a hurting on you if you bonk, bonk your head on it. They weigh about, this one is a small one, uh, and you can see how big it is. Here's my arm and it's still going up, up, up. Uh, my longest one is about almost four feet long. So you can eat this squash at Trombocino as uh, early in the summer as a summer squash. 
It is delicious, uh, really has a little sweet tone, does not get so mushy, and everybody I gave it to liked it so much more than uh, zucchini. So the cool thing about a trombosino though, is you can keep letting it grow and uh, on the vine, it'll get quite large. And then you just let it harden and then you treat it like a winter's flesh. And it's much like a butternut. The flesh is not as orange. It's more of a greenish flesh, but it has been delicious. And we are finding all sorts of things to do with our winter squash. So I grow a lot vertically, as you can see. I mean, of course the, the, the garden is on the, on the end of its time now, um, but we still have some potatoes growing and some peas and some shard and lima beans that are hanging in. So that's my garden. See you next time. I don't know if we count it as growing, but I am making compost and that's gonna be for the garden next year. I have, you can see all the leaves that are around here. So this pile in here, this will be a future video too, has been cooking now for I think we're on the 13th day of it sitting at almost 150 degrees or something like that. I'll be filling this up with some grass, some leaves, and I really want to be able to have enough compost using all the resources from around here to do my entire garden times three. So the more space you get, the more compost you make, eventually you're not going to have to spend a dime on fertilizers. I just did the rambling live so you've seen most of the plants in here. 75 degrees today or something like that. I put down dust the other day onto the cabbage plants because the white flies came back. They're a little bit more under control. Just saw a white butterfly go by. But now with this warmth rolling in, the insect problems are coming back. Different beds in here. They're probably, I know for sure, since we're informal, we'll leave my shadow in there. There are plenty of potatoes in here. Let's see if I can find one more. A couple little ones. I have potatoes growing really everywhere. <laughs> and our last video submission is from Angela. Thank you. She has a community garden and she answers the question. When I saw her backyard, I'm like, why don't you have the garden here? But you're going to find out. Hi, Gary. Hi, everyone. This is Angela. I'm in Maryland Zone 7. Um, I'm about halfway between Washington, D.C. and Annapolis, um, and I'm at my community garden. Um, this was my first year um, having a garden, and um, it was relatively successful. I had some zucchini, cucumber, tomatoes, and peppers. I would say the peppers did the best, um, but this is my plot now, and I emptied all the summer vegetables, and I have some peas growing. I have some kale and some spinach. Um, the rest of the bed um, is empty and I'm thinking I'm going to put down some of my unfinished compost and cover it with leaves um, for the winter and then I'll be all set for spring. Um, at, back at my house I have a few other things. I planted some blueberry bushes and blackberries in containers and I planted some garlic that hopefully will be coming in the um, next summer and I also have a salad table where I have some lettuces and spinach growing. Um, hi, I'm back at the house and I wanted to show the salad table that I mentioned when I was at the community garden. Uh, my husband helped me build um, it earlier this summer and have some lettuce growing and some spinach and arugula. And then back in the back corner of the yard, I have the three containers with the blueberry bushes and my garlic um, set up in those five gallon buckets. And then I also have the two reasons why I have a community garden and I'm not gardening more in the backyard. Um, the black one is Jack and the other one's Nixon. Jack's wants to fall. What I'm really doing now mostly is cleaning up the garden putting the beds to sleep, collecting seeds, enjoying the cool weather crops. You saw the radishes that I pulled out of the uh, random space, but look at these beauties. You know, maybe they grow a little bit better in a structured garden, but there's no reason you can't grow radishes in random landscape areas in your, in your yard. Again, throw down lettuce seeds, um, probably kale too. They make a wonderful ornamental plant. Things don't look so bad. 
I'm happy with where I am right now. Let's take a look at the cauliflower. Whoops, let's take a look at the broccoli. And when you're shooting the videos for this, I encourage you to just shoot it. Don't worry about mistakes. I mean, that's a beautiful head of broccoli. I have, I only grew four of this variety. I have two more to go. They're gonna have to come out soon. But if you take a look, you know, it's really clean up for me. Enjoying the cool weather crops and just kind of enjoying the garden, which I always stress. I mean, part of it is, of course, growing food, but really come out and enjoy nature, enjoy the experience, and if you're able to, share it with family and friends. This is sort of my secret garden that's an accident. This is my cold frame. It's dug down about 20 inches into the earth. There are tomatoes growing in there. They're all gonna be coming out, and I'm gonna be overwintering a lot of my pepper plants right in there, but this is pretty cool. This has been completely untended. I don't water it, I don't feed it. I have tomatoes growing in there that are flowering. They're probably, if I leave it like this and these temperatures stay mild, I'll probably be able to get tomatoes into December here. When I get a greenhouse, right now this is my functioning greenhouse. When I get a greenhouse, I'll be doing more of this on a bigger scale, but I'm still trying to figure out what kind of greenhouse I want, where I'm gonna put it and everything like that. Again, I wanna thank Rebecca Angela and Stacy for sending me videos. Don't be afraid just to shoot a minute, two minutes, three minutes, maybe a little bit more of your garden and just talk about what you like. It'd be great if you could say a little bit about yourself, where the garden's located, but try and just move the camera slowly. Use whatever camera you have. Don't worry about making mistakes. And I want Grow As We Grow to be something where, you know, everybody who's, you know, in the membership can get to know each other match up with people that are in the similar growing zones and environments and just have a lot of fun. I mean, I'm enjoying this 75 degree day. The cool weather crops look amazing. I still have the jalapenos coming out. You know, at some point the frost is gonna roll in, but I'm looking forward to the winter garden too. Again, thanks for watching. More importantly, thanks for participating with Grow As We Grow and I hope to see your videos soon. Check out the video description for a little bit of information on how to get me the videos so that they can go into next month's Grow As We Grow. Thanks for watching. You guys did a great job on your videos. Let's check out Stacy's garden. It's called the Rooted Heart Garden. If I remember the name right, I'm gonna try out the Trombancino squash. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. If I got the name right from memory, I'm terrible with it, but I'm gonna try out that Trombancino squash. It's really cool looking. She's gonna show off um, sort of a squash tunnel and she's gonna talk about her garden, which is pretty much a no-dig garden. If not, actually, it's 100%. Thanks, Rebecca. She's gonna show off her no-dig garden and she's gonna talk about, if I got it right, the trombin trombincino? Trombincino? The trombincino. The, tr the trombincino squash.